Sakanda is an eponym. Okay, so you should put a name here. So three examples of globalization, cultural, diplomatic, and economic. This is not example, okay? This is like three types of globalization. I, I want to I want you to give me very specific example. Okay. So uh, you can redo this at home. And then uh, three ethical issues. So it looks like that the student doesn't, the student don't understand what, what is ethical issue. So ethical issues is a moral issue. Mm -hmm. Moral issue in business. Yeah. Uh, maybe some be behavior of the firm, they commit to the moral standard. Yeah. And that's become, um, that's become moral issue, so ethical issue. Okay, um, this is very good one. Okay, one company was accused to to damage the natural environment, so it violates the environmental standards. Child labor, yeah, also a good one. Um, human rights. So this is IBM's case. Okay, this one is not clear to me. Uh, let's look at the second group. The second, the belief belief group. Okay, fashion. Mm. But it is not very clear how fashion is a sign of globalization. Maybe you you can um, you can have here New York Fashion Week. Okay, New York Fashion Week is an icon event that um, gather all all the fashionista over the world to come enjoy that 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 event so that is a sign of globalization but only fashion maybe not okay fast food okay this is a good example because you can see fast food everywhere in the world but um, to make it clear you can say that fast food in vietnam mm -hmm. because fast food is um is an icon of the of the west okay but fast food in vietnam we, we have fast food in Vietnam, it is because of globalization, okay? And smartphones are a very good example, yeah. Smartphones are gonna connect people from different continents. So it's a good example of globalization. Let's look at some issue right here. Very good one right here. Vina phone use clips of children. So I can see that this case is Vina phone use um, an improper clip for their marketing. Yeah, that violates um, the ethical standard. Okay, very good one right here. Yeah, high-end fashion brands in China, not in Trung Quốc, yeah, in China, kill animals such as crocodiles, rabbits. Okay, so do not harm animals is a new ethical issue now today. Very good one right here. A lot area China customers who bought fried chicken here discover that a piece of chicken had a lot of dirty bacteria. Okay, very good example here, yeah. Um, so the, the brand right here is not uh, very um, responsible for their customer, yeah, by providing unqualified product or services to the customer. Yeah. So currently I think the, the group believe, um, show that they really understand the tax and they, they did quite well. <clears throat> Let's look at the baby stormy, okay. Not a big stormy, but baby stormy, okay. harassment and discrimination in the workplace. How can this be a, an example of globalization? Okay, okay, I can understand that uh, because different country have different culture, right? So when a worker come 
to work in another country, they may be discriminated because of their race. Okay, so good one. With no globalization, it it won't be any discrimination in the workplace. But because of globalization, because of different race, then we have the discrimination. Okay, so I, I accept this one. Next, we have um, non-disclosure and corporate um, espionage. Okay, I do not understand this one. Ethics in accounting practice. How can this become a, a, a how can this be an example of globalization? Okay, so this is not clear. Okay, this one doesn't show doesn't show the the connected the connection uh, between countries. Doesn't show the the um, the flow of goods, services, capital, knowledge, and culture. Doesn't show the exchange. Um, between countries related to goods, services, capital, knowledge, and culture. Okay, so you 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 can you guys can discuss again today at home to redo the example and then complete the second part. Okay, group fancy fancy vaccine COVID nineteen. Mm -hmm. So I can understand this one as. Um, special ethical issues. Okay, this is good example already, but it's not very clear in this case, not very clear. Do not export poor quality vaccine to other countries for profit. So this look like a non-moral standard to me, not, not an ethical issues. So you have to have a case right here to show that it is an ethical issues. Using high quality and high standard food resource, a uh, food to export to other countries to increase profit. So this is still like a good thing to do. Not very clear. It's not an ethical issue. Um, cultural organization, K-pop. Okay, good one. Diplomatic um, globalization. Okay, the cooperation between US and China, very good one. Food industry globalization, KFC, okay. You have very good examples right here. Let's look at uh, three ethical issues. You come up with um, environmental issues. Hmm, not very clear for me right here. Okay, so this tool doesn't show any issue, doesn't show any problem. Okay, we want to look for ethical problem. Um, group six, hot pot. Okay, so very good one right here. You say that um, promoting and developing economy is a sign of globalization. It is true. And also um, student exchange program, also an example of globalization. Very good. And um, increasing factors of production exactly is the result of globalization. And let's look at ethical problem. Um, ethical problem posed by globalization make it easier for people to travel from one country to another. And also, it spread the COVID-19 around the world. Okay. Mm -hmm. This is a very good ethical issues. Um, globalization has uh, brought to um, to the world so many benefits but also some drawback one of the drawback is it helps to spread virus or disease all, all over the world next um, ethical issues in technology some companies are doing very well 
in developing green production and consumption. Uh, but uh, there are many other that release emission into the atmosphere. Okay, very good one right here. Mm -hmm. So technology uh, will help production, but then production will cause um, will cause um, pollution to the environment. Transportation has also put a strain on the non-renewable resource of energy. Such as gasoline. Okay, so gasoline um, can be used for production, for transportation, but it also uh, damage the, the spices, the organism. Yeah, in the ocean. Okay, so this is another uh, environmental case. Okay. Um, so good, very good, good one. Okay, so I think the group number two and group number six did a good job on this task, and I will give these two groups. Uh, one extra credit point to your group project. Okay, so uh, we come back to our lecture. Okay. <clears throat> okay. Right now we are going to discuss a very interesting case study. Uh, suppose you are the manager, another manager, okay, of a small division of a large multina multinational company operating in a remote area of the world. What do you do when the ethics of the organization clash with the ethics of the country? Yeah. What we are going to start with a case called price safety. <coughs> so this is another ethical issue related to globalization. Yeah. Because um in a because of globalization, okay, more and more multinational company, yeah, can operate in different country okay and when and when they like enter a new country yeah sometimes they will find a situation that their um, moral standard will conflict with the moral standard of the host country okay so in such case which moral standard should they follow okay should they follow the moral standard of the host country or should they follow the moral standard of um of their own country okay so this is a very interesting uh, of ethical issues um, in globalization. And we are going to watch a video related to this. We're going to start with a case called What Price Safety? What Price Safety is a story, a real story. about a company that Motorola was running 
in a very disguised location because they don't want us to know the name of the place called Nambu. Nambu manufactures microelectronics and Mo Motorola owns the controlling interest. It, the plant they have in Anzen focuses on safety and that's very important at Motorola. Nambu, interestingly, has a, a, a sort of a custom, I would say, of duty and obedience to authority. And Motorola has a worldwide code of ethics that applies to all their companies. The, that code includes, which seems pretty obvious, respect for each employee, safety first, and third, and this is important in this case, employees will not physically assault or touch other employees. Now, Okay, so I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. So, you guys know the company named Motorola? Motorola? Yes or no? Yes. yes. Okay, yes. it's a very famous um, company. And um, in the past, it has developed a phone, a very popular phone for teenage. Mm -hmm. So, Motorola is a multinational firm. Okay, so it has many different branches all over the world. Okay, and one of its branch is in Nambu. Okay, um, however, when Motorola come and work in Nambu, they find an ethical situation. Yeah, the Nambu has the culture of duty and obedience authority. Okay, which means that um, the employee in Nambu has to always listen, always obey to the authority, yeah, to the government, to the law, yeah, to the moral standard. Um, Motorola also has a, has an international code of ethics. And what is the international code of ethics of Motorola? Okay, number one, respect for the dignity of each employee. Okay, second, safety first. And last, employees will not physically harm another employee under any circumstances. Okay, so if anyone work any any Motorola employee broke uh, broke any of the rule right here, they will be fired immediately. Okay, if they broke any code of ethics, they will be fired. Okay, Alt or touch other employees. Now, what what is this case about? First of all, it's about Stan Stark, who's the American, and he is running the the headquarters. Willard Waugh is a Namian. He works on employee relationships. Henry Van Dyke is a Dutch H human resources person at that plant. Victor Min is the plant manager and he's been doing very well. And Toby Tang is an employee at the a plant worker at the plant. Notice the diversity of these people. This is quite a diverse company and a diverse group of stakeholders. Okay, so let's look at the stakeholders of Motorola. Okay, we can focus on the on the guy named Stan. He is an American, okay, and he is the HR manager, the HR manager of um of the of all uh, branches in Nambu, okay. So we have the wood right here, plants. Okay, plant here is not the tree, okay. Plant here is the branches, the um, subsidiaries, okay the local firm that belongs to Motorola, okay? So Stan is the manager of all, of all small divisions in Nambu, okay? We don't have to care about these two guys, yeah, not very important. Yeah. Next, we have Victor. Victor is very important. He is the, manu he is the manufacturing manager at one, one of the locations in Nambu, and this location named Anzen, okay? and then subsidiary and then branch and he's a manager okay and Tommy is another name one okay he's a local worker yeah and um Victor is a local manager okay so Victor is the boss of Tommy okay and Stan is the boss and Stan um Stan is the boss of both Victor and Tommy because Stan um control the human resource the other workers at the other stakeholders at the Anzen plant are, of course, Motorola headquarters, Motorola shareholders, the plant itself, and the country Nambu. Now, the okay, so we can see that as a stakeholder of Motorola, they can be individual, 
Okay, this is an individual stakeholder, but this can also be corporate corporation or organization. Okay, NEMBU is a country. Countries can also be a stakeholder. Okay, and then plan, and then location, and then branch. A branch can also be a stakeholder. Okay, and of course to have some some other um, organization can also be the stakeholder. The ends and plan are, of course, Motorola headquarters, Motorola shareholders, the plan itself, and the country, NAMBU. Now, the question we want to think about is how should we prioritize each one of these stakeholders or groups of stakeholders in this case? And that will turn out to be important, as we'll see. So what is the problem? So we can see that um, in one firm, uh, they will have, uh, the firm will have so many different stakeholder, okay? But we cannot um, spend all our time and resources to care for every single stakeholder equally. So we have to find our prioritize, okay? We have to find our priori priority, okay? Which stakeholder should take our concern at the moment? Okay? Important, as we'll see. So what is the problem here? Victor broke one of the rules at Motorola, uh, never to physically assault another employee. Uh, this is a dismissible offense, and ordinarily, Victor would be fired immediately. So Victor and Tommy are bad role models in this factory. But there's a little catch here, because in Nambu, if you apologize to someone and give them some payment, that cons is considered an apology, and the issue is over. It's finished. So how would dismissing Victor and Tommy be viewed by the Namian culture and the Namian employees? Probably little questioning. Okay, so when you can see here that Victor broke, the dilemma here is that Victor broke one of the rules of Motorola, never physically assault another employee, okay? So Victor and Tommy become a very bad role model for other employees, okay? And um, according to the code of ethics of Motorola, Victor and Tommy will be fired immediately. Yeah, no question asked. However, in Nambu, they have a different moral standard. Okay, their moral standard say that you don't have to fire anyone. Okay, you can just when you do something wrong, you can just apologize. You can just apologize and make a payment to compensate for your mistake, and you will be forgiven. Okay. So um, what is the firm is going to do in this situation? Um, should they fire Victor, Victor and Tommy and they are going to lose two employees and they also have to pay money for them because you, you fire them, okay? Or you can just follow the NAMBU custom, the NAMBU moral standard um, to let them apologize each other and make a payment for their mistake. But, but we also have to consider what other people will look at this case, okay? Because if we if we um, forgive Victor and Tommy, okay, maybe the Danby and employees won't respect the um, the code of ethics of uh, Motorola anymore. They won't respect it anymore because they think that well, mm -hmm. Motorola code of ethics is way under our own culture, yeah, our own moral standards. So we don't have to care about it anymore. Probably little questioning. And Zen has a spotless safety record, and Victor was very proud of that and wanted to preserve that. But Tommy was kind of an independent worker. He'd been a mountain guide, and he sort of thought for himself. Unlike other people in Nambu, he didn't understand duty and obedience to authority. Now, at this plant, safety glasses were required because part of the plant floor was rather dangerous. Tommy hated safety glasses and simply wouldn't wear them. And Tommy was warned, I don't know how many times, please wear your safety glasses, you know that's the rule. Finally, Victor got really fed up with Tommy and lost his temper and slapped him around his ears. Now, this is the first time Victor had ever lost his temper. He was a terrific manager otherwise. And of course, Tommy, who's now feeling really badly about not wearing the glasses, apologizes. And then Victor apologizes to Tommy for hitting him, and he presents him a lot of money as part of the compensation for hurting his ears. So Victor and Tommy are reconciled, but Tommy has lost part of his hearing. 
this is the dilemma here. To fire Victor or Tommy would be terribly expensive under Nambuian law, and it would also violate their culture. So what should Stan, the head of this company, do? When there are these deep cultural differences, how does one decide? Which shareholder interests take priority? Okay, so you understand the case? So imagine that you are the manager, you are Stan, the manager of Nambu um, location, Nambu um, branch. What are you going to do in this case? Are you going to follow the Motorola moral standard to fire the two employee? Yeah, the cost gonna be you are going to lose two good employee, okay? And then you're going to have to pay for for the uh five you have to pay money to fire them. So according to the the moral standard in Nambu, yeah, you know, when you fire someone, you have to pay the money. Yeah. So we'll not only um you you will not only lose two employee, but you also wanna lose some money. Okay. In the second option, you choose to follow the NAMBU standard, okay? You you forgive the two employees, yeah. However, it means that your, um, your country, your company um, moral standards will be lower than the country, the local country moral standard, okay? Which one are you going to choose? Anyone? Okay, so this is a, a very interesting case. Okay, when you see a conflict in um, moral standard, and um, we have new concept right here: ethical relativism. Okay, tương đối, sự tương đối, về đạo đức. This theory say that because different societies have different ethical beliefs. There is no rational way of determining whether an action is morally right or wrong, other than by asking whether the people of this or that society believe it to be right or wrong. In fact, the multiplicity of moral goods demonstrates that there is no one right answer to ethical questions. The best the company can do is follow the old adage when in Rome, do as the Romans do. In other words, there are no absolute moral standards, okay? So according to this theory, it says that um, different countries, different society has different moral standards, okay? And um, the moral standards are equally important, yeah? It just depends on which country is practicing which moral standard, okay? So the solution, the guide for the company is that they should do as the Romans do, which means that when they when they operate in one country, they have to follow the the country's moral standards, the country custom. So that is the general idea of ethical relativism. Um, moral relativism, the same with ethical relativism. Okay, the same thing. The theory say that there are no ethical standards that are absolutely true and that apply or should be applied to the companies and people of all societies, okay? So we say that um, there is no moral standards that, that, that is true everywhere, okay? But each country, each society has their own moral standard, okay? And ha we have to follow the moral standard of the location. However, um, this, this theory got several defense got several objections. The first objection is that some moral standards are found in all societies, okay? Even though different societies have different standards, however, there are some standards um, are the same or the universal standard, you know, are the international uh, moral standard that we can see everywhere. For example, killing is bad, yeah. Killing is bad, it is true everywhere, okay? And they think that in the case um, that we have, with the, when we have the, the universal moral standard and the local moral standard, 
we should prioritize the universal, the international model standard higher than the local standard. The second objection is that moral differences do not logically imply relativism. Okay, so it means that um, when we see two differences in moral standards um, uh, in two different culture, okay, we have to evaluate which one take priority in, in, in this case, okay. We cannot accept that, oh, that two moral standards are equally and uh, are equally to each other, okay. We have to prioritize one over another, okay. Next, relativism has incoherent consequences, okay. So if we accept moral relativism um, theory, yeah, we, we, we will accept that, okay, two moral standards from two different countries are equally important. Yeah, but it's not true because each, each will lead to different results, each will lead to different consequences. So in order to make decision, we have to prioritize one over another. We have to determine by ourselves which, which one take priority in this case. And last one, this one similar to the first objection, yeah, relativism, privilege, whatever moral standards are widely accepted in society, okay. So it's better to, um, so in, in case that you have two, two conflicting moral standards, okay, you should prioritize the one that widely accepted. And then we have another theory, um, integrative social contracts theory, ISTD, okay. This theory say that there are two kinds of moral standards. The first one named hypernorms, and the second, micro social norms. So what is hyper norms? Those moral standards that should be applied to people in all societies. So the norms that apply to everyone in the world, that is hyper norm. Some example of hyper norm can be human rights, so human rights principle, okay? And then uh, we can have WHO, um, United Nations uh, uh, regulations for all the member countries, and all the member country has to follow that that um, guide, guidance and um, regulation, and that will become the hyper norms. Okay, hyper norms are the norms that every single country have to follow. Okay, and what is micro social norms? Those norms that differ from one community to another, and that should be applied to people only if their community accept those particular norms. Okay, so my, micro social norms can understand as local norms okay um one example right here when traveling a married woman must be accompanied by her husband or a male relative a norm that is practiced in saudi uh, saudi arabia and several other arab countries but not in the united states nor europe okay so this is a micro social norm it is a local country norm only exists in arab countries but not anywhere else in the world Okay, so hyper norms, international norms, and micro social norms, local norms. Okay, and this theory says that when a manager is operating in a foreign community, okay, the manager should follow the micro social norms of that community. Yeah, do as the Roman do. Okay, as long as that local norm, that micro social norm, do not violate any hyper norms, any international norms. Okay. In case the micro social norms violate the hyper norms, then the manager should not follow that micro social, should not follow that micro social norm. Okay. For example, child labor. Child labor is a micro social norm in China, right? However, the hyper social norms say that you shouldn't use child labor. So if you are a manager working in China, okay, you see that micro social norm of using child labor is conflicting, is violating the hyper social norm of UNs do not use child labor. Then as the manager, you should choose not to follow the micro social norm, the local norm of China. Yeah. Okay. So now let's look at the ending of the case the, the, to see how, how uh, Stan, the manager solved his case. Okay. When he has the uh, different norm from different the conflicting norms between corporation and the country 
what the manager is going to do in this case. Let's return to the case, what price safety? Let's analyze the case, what are Stan's options? According to Motorola code, for all their companies, Victor and Tommy should be fired. They both disobeyed Motorola's rules and conducts. And, or Stan could lay off Victor, after all, he was the perpetrator, and give Tommy another chance. Tommy didn't wear his safety glasses, but let's have, give him another chance or dismiss Tommy because of safety in practice and give Victor another chance. Now, any of these options are expensive. Now, Boolean regulations concerning dismissing employees are terribly expensive. You have to pay them for a two years salary. And then there's another question. How does dismissing Victor affect other employees' morale? He's done such a good job at this plant. People love him and they work hard for him. What's gonna happen when he leaves? And finally, are Motorola's principles absolute? Is there no moral space here for micro norms, for local customs, for micro contracts? And what does this look like from the Nambu perspective? According to Nambu, culture, Victor should continue as plant manager because he apologized and paid reparations. He's forgiven, and he's been forgiven by Tommy, and he's forgiven Tommy. He's never hit anybody before. He's an excellent manager. And Tommy, who now understands what's at stake here, should be given another chance as well. Okay, so in here we see that Cost of ethic of Motorola is is a micro social norm. Okay, the norm that only used in Motorola corporation, not in, in any other corporation. Okay, and also um the standard, uh, the moral standard in Nambu is also a micro social norm. Okay, so stand the manager right here have to decide whether to have to decide between two different micro social norms. Okay, and according to the theory right here, yeah, you have to prioritize one norm over the other. You cannot accept both of them at the same time. Okay, and in this case, um, and in this case, it say that um, the manager should follow the micro social norm. Okay, and that was the decision. the decision of the of the manager okay he decides to prioritize the um moral standard of nambu over the motorola because he he doesn't want to bear the uh the loss from firing two employee okay <clears throat> so um today we have learned about several important concepts do you guys have any question for me? Yes or no? Any question? Yes or no? No. no. Okay. If no, then um, I guess we we are going to see each other again next week in class face to face. Okay. Bye bye, everyone. Bye-bye, Dita.